This week in the news, is Microsoft out to get Linux? Hmm. Android has been approved by the Pentagon for Department of Defense usage. Are you ready to boycott all of SOPA's supporters out there? LXDE and XFCE, your alternative desktops for Linux. How popular is Linux Mint these days? Why Java isn't dead on Ubuntu. And finally, the smallest Linux distribution I personally have ever seen, Tiny Core 4.2, has been released. And we're going to discuss all of that right now on Spatry's Cup of Linux. Is Microsoft out to get Linux? In the early days of Linux, the anti-Microsoft controversies and conspiracies were everywhere. In recent years, Microsoft has come to an accommodation of sorts. Though the deals that they have made, that accommodation continued to be a source of significant controversy in 2011. Back in 2007, Microsoft first alleged that open source software infringes on at least 235 of its patents. That allegation led to multiple companies, including Novell and now SUSE, signing patent deals with Microsoft. In 2011, Microsoft's patent focus seemed to sharpen on Android, except for Motorola. Microsoft now has every mad major Android phone vendor in some kind of deal over intellectual property. I just wonder if Microsoft's making more money off of Linux than they are on their own operating system. The Pentagon has approved a version of Android running on Dell hardware to be used by Department of Defense officials. The approval of Android by the Department of Defense is a major setback for Apple's iPhone. This doesn't mean that Department of Defense employees can use any Android phone. The Pentagon has approved only Dell's hardware running Android 2.2. The reason was simple. Open source, stars and stripes reports. Android developed by Google and other companies is open source software, meaning it can be easily configured by users, including Department of defense tech wizards who want to install security measures. The Army is already doing widespread testing of prototype smartphone-like devices for use in combat. These devices could change the Army's tactics, reports Stars and Stripes. iOS has not been approved, probably due to Apple's tight control over the platform. All right, and now there is more news on the Stop Online Piracy Act. Boycott Apple, Microsoft, the SOPA supporters. Now, everybody knows that GoDaddy burned their fingers when they decided to sell their soul to the devil. More than 21,000 conscious users migrated to other services. GoDaddy changed its stand the same day which seems to be nothing more than a PR strategy as GoDaddy worked on creating this act. If they oppose this act, they must run a campaign to ensure that the Stop Online Piracy Act is not passed. That is what it means by opposing the bill, and not by secretly supporting it via PIPA or Protect IP. GoDaddy paid heavily as informed and concerned GoDaddy users revolted and threatened to switch to other registrars. How about other SOPA supporters? Will you be boycotting them as well? There are two monopolies which are endorsing SOPA, Apple and Microsoft. Apple has not said anything to support SOPA, but the company either way doesn't care about anything beyond its profits. 
Apple itself is a sensor police where it runs its own version of SOPA. Microsoft, on the other hand, has been openly supporting such bills. Microsoft's Brad Smith, who blushes every time the company forces a player to sign an Android contact, contract on the basis of bogus patents, took pride in supporting the act. Smith wrote on the Microsoft blog, we support the goals and approach of this important legislation and urge the committee to report it. He concludes, Microsoft is a company built on innovation and its protection through intellectual property rights and we are committed to helping ensure that copyright is respected in the online environment. We look forward to working with others as this bill advances toward enactment. Microsoft and Apple are abusive monopolies which are endorsing and supporting these dangerous bills. The informed and concerned internet community revolted against GoDaddy and brought it to its knees. Are you ready to boycott Microsoft and Apple? It also appears that, the, uh, that CBS, the owner of CNET and Download.com has actually been hosting software designed to promote piracy. Um, different BitTorrent clients were being offered as well as Nutella-based downloaders as well as providing reviews and instructions on how to use them as well as providing links to uh, as well as providing links to where you can download pirated material. Information will be in the show notes below and you can see that interesting video. GNOME and KDE may be high-profile Linux desktop environments, but they are not to everybody's tastes. Now, if we believe everything we read, users are abandoning GNOME in droves in frustration at the perceived quirks or failings of GNOME 3 or the Unity desktop that's provided by uh, Ubuntu. Now, back in July, Linus Torvalds complained about uh, GNOME 3 in that uh, he felt it was an unholy mess and expressed the feelings of many users when he wrote, uh, I used to be upset when GNOME developers decided it was too complicated for the user to revamp some mouse buttons in GNOME 3. The developers have apparently decided that it's too complicated to actually do real work on your desktops and have decided to make it really annoying to do. Now, he later went on to add that the GNOME 3.2 is starting to shape up because now you are able to add extensions to it and give it better usability. But for those who do not like the GNOME or KDE desktops, you can always try the lightweight LXDE and XFCE user interfaces. On my channel I have a number of videos uh, showing those in action and you could definitely give those a spin, although I do admit that the LXDE and XFCE user interfaces aren't quite as intuitive as GNOME 2, but at least you know if you are an I can you know if you like eye candy like I do, you can run Compiz with them effectively. Now it is my hope that in the future we'll see more improvements happening with uh, GNOME 3. But I would also like to see improvement in the LXDE and XFCE desktops. So, is Linux Mint the most popular distribution out there? Uh, the decline of Ubuntu and the corresponding rise of Linux Mint is one of the bigger Linux controversies of 2011. Ubuntu's introduction of Unity alienated a non-trivial portion of the Ubuntu user base which went looking for a new home and found it in Linux Mint. Now how big was the exodus from Ubuntu to Mint? That's difficult if not impossible to accurately measure. Plenty of experts like to highlight the fact that Mint is at the top distro as ranked by DistroWatch. DistroWatch however is not a measure of users or even downloads. It is just a measure of the relative popularity of a given distribution page on the DistroWatch site. It is likely that Mint has picked up a good number of former Ubuntu users. 
it is also likely that Mint's popularity surged in 2011. It's not clear and also not entirely likely that Mint is the most popular distro in terms of the total number of users. Why Java isn't dead on Ubuntu? A deceptive headline caused a panic in the Ubuntu community. Don't worry, Java's not going anywhere uh, for a long time yet. There has been an amount of upset finally surfacing as a result of the decision Oracle took over the summer to discontinue packaging Java for Linux under the distro license for Java. Quite a lot of people commenting on the article at OMG Ubuntu this week. For example, uh, see the news that the Java packages are no longer being maintained in the Ubuntu repository. Now, I was alerted by PinGuy that there is an update that actually prevents uh, Java from working, but the quick way to get around that is to see my tutorial on the channel and I will show you how to uh, download the open Java onto your system from Ubuntu's repositories and that will quell the issue. Also, the open Java runs really well. I've never had any trouble with it. Next up, TinyCore 4.2 has been released. TinyCore Linux is a 10 megabyte graphical Linux desktop. It's based on the Linux 2.6 kernel, BusyBox, TinyX, FLTK, and FLWM. The core runs completely in memory and boots very quickly. This has to be the smallest Linux distribution I have ever seen. It is not a complete desktop, nor is all hardware completely supported. It represents only the core needed to boot into a very minimal X desktop, typically with wired internet access. More information on this can be found on distrowatch.com. If you thought this show was useful, please comment, like, and subscribe. Also catch me on Facebook and Twitter. If you would like to speak with me in person, please check out my video on TeamSpeak in my channel. And uh, you can actually join the Linux community. We're no longer chatting on IRC. We are now chatting live. And if there's enough people in the channel at one given time, we may actually do a show there and you can get a chance to appear on the show if you would like. Also, I would like to welcome all of my new subscribers. If you have any questions or comments, please send me a private message and I'll be happy to answer them as quickly as I can. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.